I got a small SBC about a year ago and it has already gone through multiple transformations. I used it as a 10 gigabit server, a Linux computer and I even recently turned it into a fairly capable PFSense router. But at its core it was built to be a NAS. And the manufacturer does push CasaOS forward as the NAS operating system. But the grass seems greener on the other side. So I decided to go with true NAS. I admit I didn't want to go through the potential troubleshooting of link aggregation, so I went the easy and tried way. Besides the small SBC, I also got a sort of metallic stand that the manufacturer sent me for another project last year, along with some PCIe accessories. I will use the 4-port multi-gigabit NIC, since I do want to use more than one port at a time to connect the NAS to an Asus router. The router is the RTX 86U Pro and it does support the link aggregation in the form of LACP. I connected a couple of 4GB Ironwolf HDDs, which are designed to work nicely with an NAS, and I put everything together. I still needed a USB hub because the Zima Blade only offers one USB port and I had to connect a mouse and a keyboard. A monitor is also needed and since there is a mini display port I needed an adapter to connect to the HDMI port of the 20 year old TV I have available as my second monitor. YouTube really makes you serious money. Now let's talk about the software. I chose TrueNAS Scale which is open source and available to download from the official website. And you will need a USB drive to add the software. I used Balena Etcher once again and a few minutes later I got the drive ready. Connect everything including the flash drive and power up the NAS. I also connected the NAS to the Asus router so that it can receive an IP address later on. You will most likely have to change the startup order from the BIOS and to do so just hit F12 on the keyboard and then we can start installing the TrueNAS scale. I couldn't use an external SSD since the slots were occupied by the two hard drives so I simply chose the available native storage and then I went forward with a fresh install. You will be asked to create an admin password and then we need to wait until the installation process is done. It will take a few minutes but we will eventually see the console setup window with the nine available options. We can also see the IP address that can be used to access the web-based interface. I don't really need to do anything else here, since the rest of the configuration will happen in the aforementioned interface. So we can unplug the monitor and the USB hub with its accessories. While I was connected to the Asus RTX 86U Pro, I entered the NAS IP address in the URL bar and I was asked to log in. I used the admin credentials that were previously created and were in. I wanted to initially prepare a shared folder that I can access from my computer, so I created a new pool from under storage. I used the two hard drives that I got installed and decided to go with Mirror because I want a backup in case something happens with one drive. But we do get a whole lot of options to choose from. TrueNAS really evolved in the past few months, it's insane. Next I added a dataset and then I head over to Shares. I wanted to run a Windows Samba Share so I clicked on Add, chose the path and then I got an error that there was no active directory and that a Samba user was missing. Let's go and create one. I have two local users available but neither had Samba authentication enabled. So I created a new user with a dedicated passkey which could use Samba authentication. We should now be able to create a Windows Samba share. But we're not done because even if you should be able to access the shared drive from your PC there will be an error when trying to add files. It's about permissions. So let's fix it. I went to shares and clicked on edit file system ACL. By default the user object will be root which, as I previously stated, cannot be used for Samba. So I switched the newly created user under Owner and ticked Apply Owner. Save and everything should now work as intended. I moved the movie to the NAS and I saw about 500 megabits per second, which is decent via Wi-Fi. Let's now prepare the link aggregation and first we'll do it on the Asus router. Access its web interface by entering the IP address in the URL bar, log in and then head over to the advanced settings, choose LAN and select switch control. Simply enable the link aggregation and that's about it. The RTX 86U Pro allows the bonding of the LAN 1 and LAN 2 ports which are both gigabit. But I could not find a way to change it and select the 2.5 gigabit port instead. The maximum supported seems to be 2 gigabits per second. At this point it's better to use the 2.5 gigabit port only to connect to the NAS but this is an option only if the NAS has multi gigabit ports. And most do not. 
Well, in my case it does, but this is more of a proof of concept guide. Also, know that the RTX 86U Pro supports the 802.11 AD standard. Ok, now it's time to prepare the TrueNAS device as well, and to do that, we need to go to network, and if you use the same hardware as I did, then all 5 LAN interfaces should appear here. Since I already had a cable connected to the router, one port did show the IP address that the NAS received, as well as the MAC address. To set up the link aggregation, we need to add a new interface. Under type, choose link aggregation, the name has to start with bond, and then choose a number to easily identify later. Afterwards, select DHCP to automatically receive an IP address from the router, and then under link aggregation protocol, we have three options available. LACP, failover, and load balance. The second and the third will not increase the bandwidth, but we'll ensure that in case one link fails, the second one takes its place quickly, as well as balance the load between the links. That's very nice, but we do need LACP since this way we get to double our available bandwidth. I use the layer 2 for the hash policy and fast for the LACP DU rate. Under the link aggregation interfaces, I chose two ports from the PCIe NIC expansion and clicked on save. That's it for the software configuration part. Now take two Ethernet cables and connect the NAS to the router using the specific LAN ports that you chose before on each device. Give it a few moments and the NAS may receive a new IP address. Check it out by connecting the monitor. From the dashboard we should now be able to see that the two interfaces are indeed bonded and the media subtype should now show 2000 megabits per second. Now let's test it out. I wanted to check just how fast it can get so I relied on iPerf. Luckily, we have iPerf already installed on the TrueNAS, not that it was very difficult to install using the command line, so I made sure that there are multiple simultaneous connections, 20 to be specific. It's worth mentioning that I connected the client to the router using the 2.5 gigabit ports on both devices. I saw an average of 1.72 gigabits per second, which is as close as we can get to the max 2 gigabits per second. It can be better if we limit the number of simultaneous connections, 10 should be fine to get us even closer to the 2 gigabits per second max limit. Not bad at all. Well, that's about all for this video. I will perhaps make a video somewhere in the future where I test multiple routers and see how each has implemented the LAN aggregation. So subscribe to see more of my tests and guides. Thank you for watching and see you next time.